So this may not be the most exciting topic, but in this video, we're going to take a look at the controls within the transport of Studio One Four. Now, beginning all the way to the left, we have a little icon here, and this is important if you're ever having issues with um, not being able to produce sound from your MIDI controller within Studio One. This is one of the first areas that you can conveniently look at. So if I press a key on my MIDI controller, then you'll notice here that arrow to the left is going to light up. So if you're using your controller and you're not able to produce any sound, this, this is one of the first areas that you're going to want to take a look at um, to see if the information is even reaching Studio One. Now we can also click on the MIDI there to open up our MIDI monitor. Now, if I again press a key on my MIDI controller, we can actually see the information that's being sent out from our controller. So if you need to do any troubleshooting, if you're having issues producing sound, go ahead and open this up and then just see what sort of messages are being sent. So we can see I have note on and note off from C3 on the MIDI controller. We can actually select these to filter and just show certain things. We can um, clear this information out by clicking there. We can reconnect our MIDI controller by clicking there and we have an all notes off where we can stop any information. Say we have a device that's out of control. So I'll go ahead and close this window out. And then next we have performance up at the very top. We can see how much our CPU is being taxed here. We have disk use below that. And if we actually click on the word performance, then we have more detailed information. We can see we're at 3% for the CPU, disk is at zero. We can set our dropout protection here. We have cache activity that's shown and used in total. We can actually click on this checkbox here. So if we had any VST instruments, actually let me close that out, I'll F6, and let me bring in a Mai Tai. Close that out, close the browser. And then now if I come back to the performance, we can see our Mai Tai is listed here. So this is gonna give you more information on the individual uh, VSTs that you have loaded within your song. So let's close that out and move on. Here we have a little icon that's gonna show any activity for the cache. And then here we have a readout for our song position cursor. So if I press the space bar, then we start playback and we can see that this updates to show the position of our cursor. And we can actually hover on any of these areas and use the mouse wheel to change the location of the uh, song position cursor in a precise manner. So right here, we're moving it by beat. We can come to the next field and we move that in even smaller increments and the last field even smaller. Up at the top, we're gonna move by bar. And that's with using your mouse wheel. Okay, next we have some traditional controls that most any DAW is gonna have. Uh, this first, these outside arrows are going to be for if we are using markers within our song. So this little flag icon, if I go ahead and click that and I'm going to set the cursor there, click the plus symbol to add a marker. I'll click here to add another marker. And then now by using these outside arrows, we can skip to our markers directly. And if I hover, you'll see this pop-up will show shift in is the shortcut key to navigate to the next one. And then shift B will navigate to the previous marker. But I'm gonna go ahead and hide that marker track. And then we have fast forward and rewind for our cursor. We can also use the plus and minus keys on the numeric keypad to accomplish the same thing. We then have return to the beginning or zero, the beginning of our track. If I press the space bar to start playback, press the space bar again to stop. If I press the decimal on the numeric keypad, that will take us back to the beginning of our song as well. Now we have stop, which we can use the space bar to activate that. Uh, play, again, the space bar. And then we have record. And we can actually use the asterisk on the numeric keypad to enter into record as well. I'll press the space bar to stop. We then have loop activation here, so we can click that. So first we need to set up our loop markers, and we can do that by hovering 
on this gray line so we get that pencil and I can click and drag set up our loop markers and then if we click here we can go ahead and activate that so then this will cycle over and over and we can make use of the forward slash on the QWERTY keyboard as a shortcut key to activate and deactivate now these fields are going to show the locations for our left and right markers so we can see we're on bar two that is our left marker our right marker is here bar three and a little after beat two and and as we saw with this area here we can hover on any any of these fields to change the location and make some really precise adjustments and that's with using the mouse wheel simply hovering you don't need to click or anything next we have a record mode replace and by default when we record MIDI data so if I enter into record and just start playing with the uh, MIDI keyboard we have these MIDI notes that have been added and then if I come back to the beginning enter into record again we're going to add those in addition to what we've already laid down if we'd prefer to replace the information that was previously recorded we could turn activate this icon here and then if I come back to the beginning enter into record and now we can see that it replaces the previous MIDI data now this record replace ties in with the uh, record panel so if I I believe it's alt shift and R we can access the record panel and you can see record mode replace that is active and that ties in here so if I deactivate you could see it's deactivated here if I activate within the panel then it's activated within the transport but let's go ahead and deactivate and close out our record mode panel now below that we can actually click here to open up the record panel as well next we have our pre-roll we can activate a pre-roll by clicking on this icon or pressing o on the qwerty keyboard we then have auto punch which we can activate by pressing i or clicking on the icon within the transport we then have pre-count if we would like to have a pre-count before actually beginning recording we can click here or we can use the shortcut shift plus c we then have a wrench icon, which we can access additional controls for all of these things that we've been looking at here. So we can see our pre-count, pre-roll, and we can choose how many bars we would like for these to uh, use when we make them active. At the top, we have volume control or level control for our metronome or the click. We can even click on these menus here to choose a different sound if we'd like. At the very bottom we can even add our own sound we can render our click track if we'd like store a preset load a preset and we have some additional options down at the bottom for repeat accent click and creep pre-count and click and play let's go ahead and close that one out now next we have the uh, metronome which is going to activate or deactivate our click track and we can press C on the QWERTY, QWERTY keyboard to activate that. We then have the time signature for our song and to change this, say if we'd like to work in three, four, then we'd wanna click on this first digit and then we can change that to three, four, like so. I'll put that back to four, four. If we click on the second digit, we can change that as well. And so that's for our time signature or the timing of our song. We then can set the key of our song by clicking on this dash here. We have this area where we can select a particular key for the song. And this is actually going to tie in with our chord track, which is here. We then have the tempo. And if I just click once, then I can manually type in a value press enter and it will change the tempo for our song we can also use the mouse wheel to change this one digit at a time if we click hold and drag we can adjust in a more quick way and if we click on the tempo 
we can manually tap in a tempo as well. And a new feature that's available in Studio One 4 is we can actually tie this to MIDI. And I meant to look that up before the video and I did not, but I'll just do a separate video on how we can uh, connect the tap tempo to a MIDI controller. Now here we have a readout for our master channel, the levels, a clip indicator, and we have a level control for the master out. So if I open up the mix console and adjust the fader for our master out, we can see that this adjusts there. But if the console isn't open, we can always click here and drag left or right to adjust as well. If I control click, then that's gonna take that back to zero dB. Now we have these dual circles where we can choose whether we would like the master out to be mono or stereo. So by default, it's gonna be in stereo. If I click once, then we change that to mono. And we can see that that ties in with our master channel here. If I click there, we can see we return to stereo mode. And those are the controls for the transport in Studio One Four.